Well, with with any luck, our uh, if this jibe holds, we could get all the way up to Slime Slime Head, and then uh, we'll head up slightly in Inishbofin. It's 15 miles to Slime Head, and another 15 or so to Inishbofin. So, yep. Oh, there's all kinds of seabirds here. The mountains are. Connemara Mountains are magnificent. Oh yeah, look at all these little birds. So I got a call from off in the distance a few minutes ago. And uh, now we've uh, jogged over and are heading in the right direction at almost six knots. Yeah, so. and the... Um, the winds were forecast light and variable, so we're lucky um, yeah, to be getting this. It's, it's holding steady at 10 to 15, which is okay. We've just passed High Island to starboard and just a couple of miles into Boffin Harbor. And we're not quite sure if we'll go there or into the back because there's a southwest wind coming. There may be gusts to 30 tomorrow. Rasheen Bay is uh, <clears throat> more protected possibly. We're not quite sure. We've never been here. But uh, I, think, I think Boffin Harbor is actually not is not going to be a problem either. Um, there's offlying, a couple of off, offlying islands and shoals that protect it really well as well. Um, they say it's just uh, might be a problem to get in or out when it's blowing. So if you're in there, hopefully it's nice. But wow, the spectacular mountains here. She would have done it by now if she was going to make the leap. Yeah. The leap of faith. <laughs> the leap of Boffin. So here we are. This is Boffin Harbor on Inish Boffin Island. I just went for a brief swim and we're anchored off Cromwell's Barracks. Mm. In yeah. 25 feet with the sand bottom. Uh, people leaping off the pier and uh, yep, we're just enjoying a sundowner. Yep. Mostly local boats, but there is a boat here I think from Germany. Mm. Uh, this um, way down here, Dog Watch, we've encountered him since Dinkel. He's uh, circumnavigating Ireland. Yep. Single-handed. Yep. <laughs> and there's, uh, yeah, some uh, just half a dozen boats here. Mm-hmm. It's pretty tight. I don't know. The wind's coming in tomorrow. Hope we've got swingy room. We're on a very short chain, just 80, 90 feet and 25 feet of water. That's high tide. Yeah, we're going to lose 10 feet. Yeah, it's yeah. going to go down to 15. 15, so that 80, 90 feet becomes... Yeah, lots of scope. Lots of scope.
some charting. Unfortunately, Jay's not feeling too well, and it is howling with rain here in Botham Harbor. Um, I'm just going to start the engine. I'm making some tea. I'm going to start the engine and charge the batteries a bit. But uh, yeah, it's wow, it's just pouring. Well, we made it out of Inish Boffin or Boffin Harbor. It has a tricky little entrance there uh, with the numerous shoals, and there's a good sector light to guide you. And uh, it's a little bit bumpy and really blew overnight, got up to 30 knots. So we're going 10 miles to Little Guillory Bay, we think. Anyway, we're going to check that out and anchor uh, the ferries on our starboard bow. And yep, it's. Uh, it's not raining, which, that's good news. Yes, a little overcast, but a little lumpy, but yeah. it's good to be moving again. Yes, and we need to charge the batteries anyway. Yeah. We're down to just 400 amps. Yes, the uh, solar panels weren't making much power there. No, we needed a windmill last night. <laughs> we probably would have made 100 amps, I think, over right. the last couple of days, but no, we're down to... We have no windmill on this boat. Uh, we've got 400 watts of solar. We're down to 400 amps in the house bank from 670s when it's full, so we need to run the engine a few hours, so probably we'll just motor over there. There is virtually no wind today, six knots or something from right behind us. We're going to stick the GoPro under the boat and see if we can see possibly the line we hooked has come unwrapped because I don't see the end of it and there was a long piece trailing behind the boat and now it's not there. Okay. So uh, we finally did it. <laughs> I just ran over a lobster pot. And uh, I got to try on my new uh, wetsuit that I, we've never had out of the package. I've got the hat, boots, gloves, the whole thing. It's a real heavy duty one and uh, it works good. Um, I wish I hadn't run over that line, but there was a pennant on a, on a crab or lobster trap that must have been, I don't know, 30 odd, 40 odd feet from oh, where the, yes. the trap was and uh, bang, I went right over it. Cause often we just go, you know, reasonably close to them if we're on the, Anyway, uh, the wetsuit works good and we now have about, I don't know, 20 or 30 feet of fishing trap line wrapped around our sail drive propeller. Uh, so we're going to go in to, we're going to sail into Killery, anchor and then free it up. So I don't think any damage was done. We got it shut down in time. So. <laughs> so we're, we're almost into uh, Little Killery. Uh, it looks like a good spot. I'm sure we can unwrap the line. We have we talked to uh, the uh, Clifton Coast Guard. Coast Guard. They know where we are, and uh, we're just uh, we've got the main up. We're pushing ourselves with the dinghy, so we'll push ourselves in, throw the anchor out, and clear up this. Yeah. I guess they just come by to see we're okay. Anyway, we made it in. We sailed in to Little Killery. The Coast Guard flew over us. They phoned us. And uh, we, I'm going to jump in the water and see if I can get this line off now that it's calm. Okay, so uh, I got the line off the uh, sail drive and the prop. The uh, fishing trap line, we, we had to cut it off. I unwrapped it and now here we are at Little Killery. I'm just going to go down and check the prop. And I've got my... <laughs> my El Cheapo wetsuit on. I'm quite comfortable and uh, we're we're doing okay. I, I'll just make sure the prop's okay. I'll go down again and uh, yep I think it's fine. It looks okay. I, I think we got it in time. There's a hell of a tie here though.
that purple yeah. stone that we've seen in here. Purple slate. It is uh, the community of Sa Sarak. Sarak, I think it's called. Oh, there's some sheep. And there's, uh, looks like an abandoned abandoned house here. And like a larch right. or something? Chestnut, yeah. Fuchsia, of course. So we're just getting going from Little Killery. Uh, we sailed in what two days ago Wednesday, yeah. with our uh, prop wrapped with a crab trap line, and uh, yep, no great walking and just an amazing place. This huge mountain behind us, Mi Mi We Ron. <laughs> we're saying that completely wrong. We may rename the boat that, and. Uh, we're gonna just go uh, short hop, I think maybe to Inish Turk. It's supposed to be really nice. Um, there's a few little anchorages up here. Clare is nice, uh, Clare Island. And also Akilbeg's Island. But uh, yep, we're hoping to get up and around Akilhead tomorrow in light winds, so yeah. Well, we've managed to <coughs> get off the trail somehow, but uh, there's a fence right here we can follow and, uh, and we can see the town below. Well, this nice fisherman here, he's just uh, cleaning up, has uh, offered us some uh, crab claws. If he could, he said, could he tempt us? And we said, yes, we're tempted. So <laughs> he's just gone to get some kind of nice. And uh, that's a lot of crab claws. I hope now you have a pot big enough. Oh, we've got a big pot. Don't worry. And we, we love crab. You're so welcome. you're welcome. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Well, <laughs> that was fun. A visit to Inish Turk and uh, we got some crab. We met a we met a nice man, a couple of nice people, and uh, we saw lots of sheep. Uh, it's looking perfect to get going this morning. We've got the forecast westerly, uh, 10 to 15 knots, and uh, once we get out of the lee of the island, I think there's a bit more wind than we have here. And yeah, what a marvelous visit to Inish Turk. Just a magical place. So, uh, this close to Iceland, which we're getting closer as we go up the coast here, you get a lot of fronts coming down that way. <clears throat> it's a little bit like sailing on the Newfoundland coast. 
and you get a lot of friends coming down from Greenland. So uh, anyway, there's an offshore island off of Black Saw Bay, Inish Key, and that's our destination. It's just 30 miles and in settled weather, you can anchor there. It's all sand and sand dunes out on Black Sod Point, so yeah, it's going to be spectacular, I think. Good day to get sailing. Jay's is going to make breakfast. Uh, we've got Bill's rocks here uh, just to uh, lure it of us. And uh, yep, yeah, we're laying a kill head. It's another 10 miles. And I think the islands, the Inish Kias, are another 10 miles past a kill head. And I believe that these um, cliffs here at a kill are some of the tallest in Europe with a sheer vertical drop. Uh, maybe over 600 meters, something like that. So yeah, it's just, just a spectacular set of cliffs here. Oh, inch over there. It's a wee bit bumpy here still. I am wearing my tether. Yeah, no, now you can see the... Wow, yeah, look at these. Let's see. It is 8.30 on August 7th. It's a Sunday. Uh, behind us is Inish Key Island. Uh, Inish Key South, that's called Rasheen Harbor. This is Inish Key North. And uh, it's kind of just an overnight stop. It's very beautiful here, but we want to take advantage of this nice southwesterly to get up and around Aris Head and into Broad Haven. Uh, and from Broad Haven, we're going to cross Donegal Bay to Killebeg. So, yeah, we've got a couple of really good days sailing. Um, it's a, quite a long day sail from Broad Haven to Killebegs, uh, you know, maybe uh, 12 hours or so, 65 miles, I think it is. Um, but, yeah, beautiful here. And the, this wind, uh, it's a steady 15, 18 knots has blown all night long. <laughs> Just uh, unstoppable. Constant from the same direction. Just leaving the uh, through the channel north of North Inish Key Island. Um, it is uh, there is lots of uh, crab and lobster traps here, and uh, a terrific surge coming in here. It's uh, yeah, there's some good six to eight footers. Um, it's only 100, 125 feet deep now. So yep, not far around the Broad Haven though. It's only 20 miles. But there is tons of floats. They just pop up on the waves and as we discovered, they're extremely dangerous. So 
I guess we'll twirl up the main. Yep. And uh, get ready to. Uh, we're going to be like head to wind to go into this narrow channel with the anchorages. So. Yep. We'll get them down and motor up there. Throw out the hook. We have anchored here just um, in uh, the first of the dedicated anchorages. I think it's called Gloombanakin. I'm probably saying that wrong. There are three mooring boys. Uh, they have no pennants. So we, I read in a book that you just come up and you drop a bite of a line, like your duck line over it, and then lasso it that way, pull it up, then put your mooring line through the eye. There's a good big eye. Anyway, we tried that, it didn't work. The line did not sink and go around the sort of ears of the boy. So we need a chain or something to weigh that down, drop it over, and we'll try that again. Because there's, there's lots of good mooring boys, but some do not have pennants, so. Anyway, it's a, it's a great, <coughs> whoops. It is a great spot, really. A little wind piping in here, but just beautiful and pastoral. Uh, there is a life-saving station or a life-saving boat. It looks like a great big, of all things, a great big Nordhaven just came in here. Didn't expect that. Mm -hmm. 